Welcome to CAS 133 Columbia Gorge Community College, the Dallas, Oregon, Mrs. Hewitt Instructor. In this video, we're going to be looking at the directions and the information for week five. This may look a little grayed out to you, and that's simply because the week hasn't been open to the actual class of students that are in it right now, but that will look brighter once it's open to that week. Also remember, classes, course shelves change. Things are tweaked, Microsoft changes things, so I change things, I change wording. A student says, oh, this wasn't clear, so I go in and I kind of tweak it around to try to see if I can make it a little bit better to understand each time. Those types of things. So if, if things change a little bit, don't panic. It's still the basic outline of how the course is structured. So you're going to come in here and you have some support materials, the textbook PowerPoint. There's a YouTube about writing business letters. If you've never written a business letter, it's much different than a casual friendly letter. And it's much different than currently writing emails. For a lot of people in the last few years, um, and that few years is becoming a longer few years, a lot of correspondence is done by email. And there are a lot of people that have never actually written a true formal business letter. If you're one of them and you really go, business letter, really, there's a difference? I would suggest you watch that YouTube because there is definitely a difference. There are some different so-called rules for writing it. And here's another one. There's a couple of them I put in there to just give you some reference to go to to see how um, there should, they should be done, what information you need. And it may make this whole process a little bit clearer, like why are they making me do that? That doesn't make sense. What what? What are we doing? Well, then you'll understand what we're doing. The goals are there. And this video will be right here under the link. That is a required video. Please watch it before you start. It's obviously, you if you're hearing this, you probably are watching it. This is your direction and overview summary. This kind of, it's not really so much directions. It's more just an overview summary that gives you information about this week. It's like the back of that book we talked about. And the kind of the checklist summary at the bottom to go check, check, check. Yep, I've done all that. I haven't missed anything by accident. So that's a good thing to look at. Here are your student data files for when you need them to download. And your business letter assignment upload. Upload for the different version. Your application project. Your journal reflection, which doesn't change its rules until kind of the last week. And then I ask you to do something a little different your forums, and your extra credit link. So that part's all pretty much as per the other videos. If you don't remember it, please go back to video number three, week three, because I do the in-depth learning project and the in-depth application in work week three. However, um, I do want to look at the, what the finished product's going to be and talk about that a little bit with you. So, what do you need? Well, this is the letter. <clears throat> Post my writing all over it. This is going to come up with a current date. You are supposed to adjust the margins. It's in the directions, so you need to follow those directions clear through. Now, how it starts out is you make a header. You've been hired to a business office. You need to make a, a letterhead for them. So you're going to create the letterhead. You're going to save it. You're going to save it as a separate document so it can be used by anybody in the company anytime they need it. And then each time a person wants to create a formal letter, they bring up this letterhead, they type the letter, and they save it with a new name. So a lot of times that letterhead gets saved with a name like letterhead. And then the next time it might get saved with Mr. Song or Ms. Song. I guess it's Ms. there. Ms. Song. So it's a different letter and it doesn't replace that letterhead. So you're actually creating two documents, a letterhead and then the letter on the letterhead as a second document saved with a slightly different name. You will only be actually uploading the completed letter with the letterhead and the, the actual words on it. But when you're done, you should have that second document. And if you don't think that ever happens, I moved to a different school where I was teaching. The first thing the boss asked me to do was, could I create a letterhead for the building? They didn't seem to have one. So I have actually been asked to do that. So you get the letterhead created. Now look at the color. Now my camera obviously doesn't show the color really well. It's kind of an olive greenish color. It's not a bright shocking green. It's not lime green. It's kind of a pale gentle, olive-ish green, not battleship 
gray or anything like that. It's a, it's a green, subtle green. You need to try to match that if you don't have the right theme. You have the books, you need to have those in there and matching. Notice the books have been tipped so that they're facing each other. So there's a reversal that has to happen so you get your books going like towards each other. You've got your inside address. Notice it's not double spaced, it's single spaced. Sorry, it's a little blurry, but that's just how it is when you do things like this with a, a camera on a screen. You've got your head, heading for your salutation. Notice there is a space and there is a space. Notice this is a serif font. It has the little extra fancies on it. And then it has the first paragraph there. Now that first paragraph looks really basic, but if I turn the markings on, on it, there would be a special marking here. It's called a non-breaking character. That means that Branch Center team and the Branch Center would always be together, no matter where it hits on the line, and no matter how my printer is set, no matter any of those types of things, it will stay together. That non-breaking character means that those words must be together on the same line. They cannot be split under any conditions. I will look to make sure you have that in this project. You also have to do it in your application project. It will ask you to have a non-breaking character. Notice there are no underlines on the email. They've taken those out. Notice how this is centered. You need to make sure you pay attention to all those details. Then you've got this chart. Notice it's centered on the page. It's not to one side or the other. Also, you'll notice this is a little bolder across here. This is centered. This is not divided and colored. The table has to be set up like this, including all that information. As you requested below is my availability by day, that's a colon, and then it needs to be done in the bulleted list. You come down here and you continue across here, fill that in as it's marked. This is not tab, 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 space, 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 space. It's also not centered. That is actually setting a tab stop, so you hit it once and there it is. When I turn on those marking characters, I can see if you went space bar, space bar, space bar, space bar, space bar, or tab, 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 or just centered it. So those will all be scored down if you haven't done it correctly. Notice there is a special amount of gap, and then you put that over with the same tab. You'll notice I have the grid table marked as six colorful accent number one. That's what it's supposed to be. If you're using this color up here, you match it with this color down here. I got one of these that was bright, shocking green. It would be great for, you know, like football socks or something. Um, not so great for the table. It just didn't look good at all. And it was not close enough for a passing score on it. I mean, they were docked points for that. So you need to make sure it passes. It also needs to be on one page, just like it is. So you must get the, the spacing, the margins, the where it's double spaced, where it's single spaced, where extra spaces are at, all of those types of things. You must get that non-breaking character in there. It's not enough to just use a return and make sure it stays together because my printer may not keep that together because my office has a different printer installed than your office. And remember, I always turn on those non on the characters so I can see and I look at what you've actually done. So please make sure you're very, very careful with that. It's a case of following direction. OK, took a slight pause in there because I wasn't sure if these images were in order, but they are. So now we're going to go over to the application project. And you're going to do consider this your turn for word project number three. And you're going to design and create an admissions acceptance letter. So in other words, somebody's going to go to college, and you've got a job in the office. And you're supposed to be sending this letter to the student that they're going to be accepted into the college. Here's the information you're going to need. And they basically ask you to work through it. It's home of the Huskies, 77 Husky Lane. When you make your letterhead, keep in mind that you probably don't want peacocks or penguins on the top if it's the home of the Huskies. Hint, hint. Again, you have your websites. You should not have those live sites. They should be the where you've deleted the hyperlink which you will have learned how to do in the letter, the draft alert, and it says first paragraph. So it kind of talks you through second paragraph. 
you know that paragraph by now, at least hopefully you do. Do the second paragraph. We'd like to inform you. And then it continues on third paragraph. And then it talks about some things you should have. So the letter should contain letterhead that uses shapes and clip art. So you're going to need both a shape and a clip art. A table with an appropriate table style applied. So in other words, if you have a blue headline, I shouldn't have a purple table. You need to match up your colors. Use your themes. Use good eyeballing it. Think of graphic designers. They do not necessarily um, put those purple and pink. Well, sometimes they would with that. At least it's in the fam same family. But, you know, bright green and a blue, probably not. You know, you need to make them match like it was in the letter. Also, you have the unformatted table, so you're going to have to get it formatted. You have to have a bulleted list to present the items to complete before classes start. So it told you exactly not only to have a bulleted list, but what to bullet in it. And then it says insert non-breaking spaces in the college name. So you need to do that. Create a building block whenever you have to enter the college name. So you'll want to learn to do that and repeat it and practice it. Use the concepts and techniques presented in the chapter to create and format a letter. Yada yada, the unformatted paragraphs in the letter are, are in a file called Your Turn to One Letter. So you want to go get that. And that's going to have the paragraph. It's going to tell you about the paragraphs and the directions, but the actual paragraphs are already in that data file that you're going to go download off of Moodle. And then you've got your questions. Remember, for that, you have the question and answer document. So you're going to write your questions, and then you're going to write your answers. And then you're going to put a space, and you'll write the next question and the next answer. You're going to put a space, or even two, and you write the next question and the next answer. And then you're going to upload both documents into Moodle. Again, if you're finding that you aren't really remembering steps from earlier weeks, you need to go back to those videos because each week I kind of shorten the videos because you've been there, you've done that, you don't necessarily need to listen to it all the way again. Now your other option is to design and create a confirmation letter as a CEO of this company. So you're going to deal with a retailer and again it's going to walk you through all of these things. And at the bottom it should, it does say again, I'm going to get a little larger, contain the letterhead that uses shape with clip art, a table with appropriate style applied, unformatted above, bullet a list to present the new employees, insert non-breaking characters in spaces in the company's name, Turner Industries, create a building block for the company name, edit the building block so there's a screen tip, insert the building block whenever you use the company name, use the concepts, and it's data file 2.2 for this letter right there, so be sure you go get that data file. And if you can't remember where you get the data file, remember it's over here, right here. You open this up, download it, and get the data file out of it that you need. Now, if you're trying to work on these at home and you don't have internet at home, I suggest you go to the college or someplace with internet and you sit and download all of these data files onto a flash drive or a backup hard drive or your laptop and get them all down for the for the week and then you're good to go for that whole week and it should only be a once a week trip when you're maybe up there for another class or something like that so that you can get those early rather than waiting to the end and then going whoops I don't know where to get them. By the way the college's internet I think is on 24 7 so if you go up at night I think you can sit in the parking lot with a laptop and access it. Plus downtown the Dallas has free Wi-Fi, Sherry's has free Wi-Fi, um, McDonald's has free Wi-Fi. There are lots of places that you, if you have a laptop, and a lot of you mentioned that that was your, your computer of choice, um, that you can go to access internet in town. Um, if you live out of the Dallas, again, you may need to check with your local, but I know like in Hood River, Sherry's would have free Wi-Fi. Uh, my son sat there with a lot of hours and a soda to get work done when he didn't have Wi-Fi access a couple of times. So just something to keep in mind, there are places that you can go get 
free Wi-Fi, and I think the college is, is open all the time, so you would be able to do that as well. Once you've got it completed and you have the two documents, you go ahead and upload it to Moodle. Make sure you do your reflection. Make sure you get your 150 words for your reflection or more. Make sure you cover these three items. Make each question a paragraph. That seems to be the one thing people are missing. And if you need to, put a couple of spaces between it, because I think sometimes Moodle likes to steal spaces. And don't forget to do your form and your form posting so that you are replying not only to my question, but you're also replying to another student. So you want at least 100 plus words to me about the question, and you need to reply to another student with at least a 50 word reply. I think that takes us pretty much through week five. If you have questions, be sure to send me an email.